Good afternoon, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I am thinking about spring because here I am back in Canada right in spring, and spring is just beginning over here. And you know, I just came from Bali, and in Bali, they talked about having two seasons. So there's the dry season and the wet season. And I arrived in the wet season and uh, actually didn't see that much rain until I was in a more mountainous area. And in that area, there were heavy rains at night. And then during the daytime, it was actually quite sunny and warm too. And in the dry season, which was supposed to start in April, I noticed that we still had some rain and sometimes during the daytime and sometimes during the night, which is exactly like Canada, isn't it? That even in spring, sometimes we don't see rain for a while or sometimes we see rain for days and days and it's variable. These are just kind of um, generalizations about seasons. Yet one thing we do know about spring in Canada is when it really kicks in, we start seeing blooming of things. And as things bloom around us, we kind of bloom too, don't we? So I thought I'd start with this first quotation today by Harriet M. Jacobs. And it says, the beautiful spring came and when nature resumes her loveliness, the human soul is apt to revive too also. So I'll say that again. It says, the beautiful spring came and when nature resumes her loveliness, the human soul is apt to revive also. And this is, exactly the feeling that most of us will go through a winter and maybe in Bali it might be through a rainy season and when it becomes dry there's a revival of the human soul and again this can happen in any season we've seen some winters where we've had like a sudden warm spell and I don't know if you remember those uh, those days but it's been wonderful to have that little bit of revival where you just feel like wow something feels different and it's suddenly warmer and something is alive it's reviving and we do too and it comes right from the soul level but we feel it in our minds and our bodies too and so I came across another quotation it's by Rumi and I guess I'm feeling poetic today so of course some poetic things are coming up and in, in my newsfeed and I certainly am drawn to them so I'd love to share this quotation with you it says Sit quietly and listen for a voice that will say, be more silent. As that happens, your soul starts to revive. And this is the process of meditation. So if we are quiet enough to even hear that voice that says, be more silent, and this only takes a little bit of focused attention to our minds to recognize that oftentimes our minds are seeking some silence, are seeking a bit of quiet. And of course, meditation, my bias, is always such a wonderful place to be able to have this quiet time. And you know, any experience can be a meditation. So again, we know that prayer and meditation are very similar this way, but prayer gives people that silent time. But even prayer or meditation, there are many people who do these things regularly and yet cannot silence the mind. So they're still thinking about various things that are to be done or have just happened and yet not really silencing the mind. And there is this, literally this voice that will kind of tell our minds that if we're listening, to be more silent. And the nicest thing is, is when I say that um, anything can be a meditation, being out in spring or being out in nature can certainly revive this energy because oftentimes we can look at nature in silence and quite honestly when we see something beautiful so we see the budding of a flower and or even a budding of a leaf and it's such a moment of awe right that it just without even saying anything that we're just quiet in observing this and I certainly recommend this to clients that this simple action of full attention, of observation, of what we are either seeing or listening to or hearing or feeling or aware of in general, this observation, this attention is such a needed space for the mind. And this needed space for the mind allows the soul to flourish. And today I also wanted to make sure that you know that this is the same energy that works in whatever we do. So whether it is our day-to-day -day cooking, cleaning, um, major responsibilities that we might be taking on, major or minor, all these things can 
utilize this space of silence to really bring out the best of us. And this also applies to workplaces and this also applies to schools. And today I also wanted to make sure that you're aware that teaching requires this space too. Now what's happening in a lot of teachers' minds is this busyness of I gotta make sure I teach this, I gotta make sure that this gets covered, I've gotta make sure these get marked, I gotta make sure that these marks get in. All of that sort of idea, I have to make sure I speak to the parents, all of these ideas that are really strong in teachers' minds doesn't often allow for a space of silence. And then from that space, students are being taught and guess what they're doing? They're thinking about, I gotta get this done, I gotta get this exam done, I've got this assignment to do, exact same way. And when we're teaching and then learning from that space, it doesn't allow for a full experience of learning from a soul level. And from a soul level, it's very different than just from the mind level. So today I'd love for you to give that uh, a try and see that if you have even a moment, so I'll say one minute of silence, see how much fresher your mind is, see how revived your mind gets. And you can do this in any aspect. You can do this on your way to get groceries. You can make sure that you're having one minute of silence and see how that changes how your experience is in the next moment. And you will notice if you're paying close attention and observing your experience, it's going to be more revived when you have that little space of silence. And I mean true silence. I don't mean that you're quiet or you turn off the radio or you turn off your music or you turn off your TV and you feel that silent compared to having all those things on or any of those things on. When really the silence is to silence the mind. And this, of course, is a great experience that people can experience in meditation. And I would, of course, recommend that strongly. And if you need some direction or some help, you know, to reach out to me, I'm here to help you. <clears throat> and so finally, I thought I'd finish with this other quotation by Rabindranath Tagore. And it's a lovely way to realize exactly what I'm trying to say in one nice quotation. So I'll read this to you. It says, a teacher can never truly teach unless he is still learning himself. A lamp can never light another lamp until it continues to burn its own flame. The teacher who has come to the end of his subject, who has no living traffic with his knowledge, but merely repeats the lesson to his students, can only lead load their minds. He cannot quicken them. So let me make sure I read that again, since I stumbled over lead and load, right? So... <clears throat> a teacher can never truly teach unless he is still learning himself. A lamp can never light another lamp unless it continues to burn its own flame. The teacher who has come to the end of his subject, who has no living traffic with his knowledge, but merely repeats his lesson to the students, can only load their minds. He cannot quicken them. Now, do you know what this word quicken? This quicken word really means to enliven, to bring to life, this quickening the mind. And you know how many teachers are out there? We're all teachers. So teachers, gurus, whatever you want to call it, it is the aspect of teaching. So we can be teachers as parents. We can be teachers as friends, as siblings. We can be teachers as workers and whoever we work with. It doesn't matter which field we work in. We can be teachers in our offices and we can be teachers if we're actually teachers as professions. We don't have to have teacher as a title for a profession to recognize that we are teaching and people are learning from us constantly. And we're learning from ourselves if we choose to. And unless we're quickening our own minds, we can't quicken another. This is a lamp lighting another lamp. And literally, unless we're excited about, wow, this is something I'm learning. And I have to tell you that throughout my teaching career, so whether it's been with patients or whether it's been with students, I have to tell you that this has been such a fantastic experience for me that when I see the eyes of whether my client or patient lighting up with some understanding of something that has quickened their mind and their experience, it's such a satisfying thing, both for myself and the experiencer of that, that lighting up. And you know that this happens as teachers in schools too, that when we see that what we're teaching is suddenly understood by students and it's actually applied and there is that 
light of understanding that literally just light up faces. And this light goes back and forth. So perhaps an instructor that is lit up by what they're teaching is lighting up the students. And I'm sure we've all experienced this with some teachers in our lives. So whether it's a family member or whether it's an actual teacher that we formally call a teacher, you know this experience. And this experience is also what can happen in spring because when we suddenly see that when trees are completely bare and suddenly they start getting buds and suddenly we start seeing leaves, that's that quickening. That is the wisdom that's coming through nature. That same wisdom comes through us if we can just silence the mind for a minute at least at a time to allow this quickening process within us and allow our soul to speak through our minds and bodies. I wish that experience for all of us. So I hope for five minutes after this video, you can give yourself an, a little sample of that quietening the mind, completely quiet, no extra thoughts, no things about what you're going to do next, but suddenly, certainly have that one minute of just silence, complete silence and quiet the mind and you can do it. And if, it, if a minute seems too long, take 10 seconds, take 30 seconds, do whatever length of time you can, but make a conscious intention to quiet the mind and see if you can quicken it and revive its energy with the soul energy that will flow through you. I wish you a fantastic day ahead of trying that. I wish you a beautiful evening here in Ontario and perhaps early morning in Bali and wherever you are. I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.